GG Radio. Calgary, join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team, live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m., showtime 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284. 3450. That's come worship the king. Calgary. See you there. My soul. HGG Radio. The morning show is sponsored by All Style Construction. For all your general construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making, visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca, or give them a call at 780 484 8885. A revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio, join me, your host, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show, Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. HGG Radio.
fall let it fall let it fall on me spirit of the living god fall afresh on your people let god arise and all his enemies be scattered here inside of the hope of glory morning show just about nine minutes after six o'clock mountain standard time i want to say good morning to our friends joining us at hggradio.ca our friends listening on the hgg radio mobile app so good to have you on board this morning. There's a blessing with your name written on it. God has been faithful to you, and he has been faithful to me. Saying good morning to you, Jennifer Thompson. She says, Connell and Sister Roshan and Sister Douglas on the passing of Pastor Allen. Trust me, it has been one of those weekends, my friends. A good friend of mine. I call him Brother Allen because I knew him before he, he got saved. I remember the day when he walked up, he was dressed in a red suit, and he went up for that altar call. I remember one of our friends, you know, walked him up there to the altar call, and his life was never the same. We had Bible study together, spent many, you know, days at his house doing Bible study, going on that Julie mango tree, eating mangoes. Lord, we and one thing Your Holy Spirit now. And one thing I remember about my good friend who passed away over the weekend was that he called me the modern day Abraham. Your the modern day Abraham. Because he always respects me as as a man of faith. Lord, I just want to say my condolences also to his wife and his children, his family, and everybody who was close to him, the church family. You know, it really hit, you know, the leaders, the leadership group very hard. Those who are in the leadership position, never good to lose a loved one, especially somebody, a colleague, a friend. I want to say good morning to all those who are joining us from the different parts of the world. Those who are listening to us on hggradio.ca, those on the app. Our friends on Facebook, our friends on YouTube, want to say good morning to you. Joan Mullings, trust all is well with you, Sister Joan Mullings. Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit now. I also want to say good morning to you, Eloni Taylor, Kathleen Andrews, Elsie Knight, Maria, Sister Maria, how are you doing? My friend Diane Brown, Teresa Hamilton, Andrea Jones, the one and only Janice McIntosh, Lira Chambers, Mary James, Joycelyn Richards, Chubb Checkers, Pat Henry, Michelle Bennett. Thank you so much for being on board. Lalitha will be a blessing to you, Rosemary Riley, Lisa Lowther, my friend Williamson, Salog, Salog. I, I really don't know how to pronounce this word. Maybe because I'm not a fully fully awake. <laughs> Angela Hackett, good morning to you. Cynthia Wallin, Eileen Ellington, blessings to you. Blessings to you, Joan Mullings, as well. All those who are coming on this morning, a blessing awaits you. A blessing awaits you indeed. Of course, we're off to a late start. Do apologize for that. Reasons beyond my control, of course, is I'm only human. <laughs> you know, there are times when your phone alarms and, you know, you set your phone for the second snooze or the snooze and, and I didn't hear the second one or the third one. I believe I heard the fourth one and I thought it was the second one. So, you know, I woke up early this morning, should have woke, get up and just started getting ready for work. But unfortunately, I put the phone on snooze and you know how that goes sometimes. Not all the time you hear the snooze. So I came in a little bit late this morning, but 
I always say to you, lateness is greatness. If there's something great that God wants to release to you this morning, so I really want you to stay tuned. There's a blessing with your name written on it. It is now time for us to pray, whoever you are, wherever you are, bow your heads at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for yet another opportunity to be in your presence. Because truly your presence makes a difference. God, we're depending on you in this season. We, we glorify you and we thank you, God, for ministering to us, ministering to our needs. God, we pray in, even this morning, God, that you comfort those who are mourning, those who are feeling the loss of a loved one this morning. It's never easy when it comes to your doorstep, when it hits home. I know it's never easy. So, God, we thank you for showing up this morning. We thank you, God, for the listeners of HGG Radio. God, remember those who are watching those who are listening. Father, we pray that you'll minister a word to us because truly your voice makes a difference. And when you speak, you release every troubled mind. We know that you're the God that is able to speak. We know that you're the consuming fire. We know that you're the God that shows up and shows off. Even in the midst of a fire, even when we're backed up at our Red Seas, God, you're the still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you because you are the Alpha and Omega. We thank you that you are the beginning and the end. We thank you, God, that you are the God who was, is, and is to come. Take all the glory this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, and the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. You know, there's a blessing with your name written on it this morning. Yes, there's a blessing with your name written on it. God wants to do something for you. He wants to do something for me. God has been faithful. Even when we don't deserve this faithfulness, God has been faithful to us. There are times when we don't give God the time of the day, yet still he remains faithful to being God. You know, there are times when we take a break as Christians. A lot of us, we call it backslide. You backslide. Or you have one foot in and one foot out. So there are times when we use these phrases, we use these statements to say, hey, I'm no longer a Christian. I want to taste a piece of the world. So we walk out on the faith. We, you know, we're Christians on a Sunday or on a Saturday, but during the week is like, you know, it's a total opposite. Nobody at your workplace knows that you're a believer. Nobody, you know, on the bus or wherever you go. But what I want to talk about this morning is this topic, nobody told me. Nobody told me. And you might argue and you say, you know, there are persons who would have been ahead of you and they would have told you what to expect as a believer. No, nobody told me that. And I really want to be careful because I'm a minister, I'm a leader. God has ordained me in a certain capacity. But nobody told me that. You know, some of the problems that you'll encounter or most of the problems that you'll encounter is not just on the job, it's not just in your relationship. We're going to talk about that in just a second as well. But nobody told me that most of the problems that a person experiences in the body of Christ is in a church. And there are times when a church should be considered a place of refuge. And why do I say a place of refuge? There are times when everything around us, there's problem, problem on the job, problem in your relationship, problem when you go out, problem when you come in, come in. And the only place you're turning to is a place of refuge, which we consider to be a church, a building. So nobody expects that your greatest hurt will be encountered in a church setting. You didn't expect it. Nobody told you. Nobody told me. Not that I'm hurting this morning, you know. I want us to stick to the context of the devotion. 
But nobody told me that some of the persons who we look up to, and that is why I always come back to this statement that we have to know God for ourselves and we can't worship man. We can't, you know, like look at men as gods because men are just men, M-E-N. It doesn't spell any other way. God is God, G-O-D. It's only spelled one way and man is only spelled one way. So man can't be God, and God can't be man. So there are times when, you know, I, I, I say to myself, or we look at a person and, you know, for example, I always, I was taught this lesson that before I came on radio, that, you know, persons will love you for being on radio. They will love your voice and they will say, oh, he has such a beautiful voice and they love the song selections, the songs you select. They love everything about you, just being a personality, just being who you are. People will love you for who you are. And I thank God for you who love me for who I am because I'm not exceptional. I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, all of these big words. I'm just Roshane, right? But what I got from the first talk I had with my previous employer, he said something very profound. He said, the same people who will, you know, lift you up and walk you through the crowd will, you know, not worship you, but will give you, you know, certain um, recognition and so on. And they will talk highly about you. And if you find yourself in a scandal, he warned me about that. He said, Roshane, be careful of being in a scandal. Don't get caught up in a, you know, for example, an argument or something, you know, or, you know, you go out and you become unfaithful to your spouse and so on and so forth. Or not taking care of your children because as soon as there's one story um, against your name, is like it's totally over for you. No, the same people who loved you is now the same people that will hate you. So I thank God my boss told me, he gave me the heads up before I started working on radio. So when I started working on radio, it's not that I wasn't living a sanctified life. I started, you know, trying my best to stay in line. There were temptations, you know, on my path. And even up to this very day, temptation is not something that goes away. I'm just here to encourage somebody this morning that we believe that whenever we pass a certain test, it doesn't mean that you'll no longer get any more tests. It doesn't mean that you won't longer be tried. It doesn't mean that you won't have any more conflicts in your relationship. And that's another part I want to get to this morning. It doesn't mean, you know, I, I remember somebody said to me once, you know, and I want to use this, be very careful. Nobody told me. You know, I remember I want to use this in context. I want to be very careful because I have a wife, I have a son, and I know a lot of us here are married or have been in relationships before. But I remember there was this topic, big topic, about, you know, whenever you're choosing a spouse, they would say to you, it's God's will or it's not God's will. And some persons say, if you married somebody and it's not God's will, then it becomes the permissive will. So before I became a man who was married, there was always this big, big debate about God's will or God's permissive will. So a lot of us, you know, we sit and we say, okay, we're waiting for Mr. Perfect or, or Mr. Right or Miss Right or or Miss Beautiful, or whatever you call your spouse to be. So we're waiting, waiting for this perfect individual. We're waiting for this beautiful wedding, this beautiful marriage. Yes, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be the roses are red and the, the violets are blue. You, me and you, all together lovely, all together wonderful. But that's not the case all the time. It's not going to be altogether lovely. It's not going to be altogether wonderful. I'm here to tell somebody this morning. You're going to have problems. You're going to have conflicts. And, you know, I said to myself, you know, 
if I find a wife who is in God's will, it's, it's God's will for me to marry this young lady, then I know that I won't have any problem. That's the, that's the, um, that's the conception that we have. That's a concept that we have, that whenever we're in God's will, it means that there won't be any problem in your marriage. Talk truth. I just want persons to be on the same page with me this morning. I don't want to feel like I'm alone if I'm the only person who thought that was the case. So basically what I'm saying is that what they're saying is that if you choose to marry a person that is in God's permissive will, then this person automatically when you get married to this person, you're going to have problems in your marriage. Versus when you married a person who is in God's will, according to what you say, or according to what the Lord would have said to you, this is your wife or this is your husband. No, when you married to this person, problems are still there. So it doesn't matter if you married a person thinking it's God's will, or if you married a person, because what normally happens, as I said, is that persons believe that when you married to, get married to somebody who is in the permissive will of God, automatically they're saying that you're married, your marriage is going to have problems. But even if a person who, I've seen it by experience, and I won't you know, pinpoint anybody's marriage or anything, I've seen marriages that were considered to be in God's will or the perfect will of God, and I'm seeing problems in these relationships. Nobody told me. Nobody told you that whenever the Lord sends you on a path, whenever the Lord gives you a vision, whenever the Lord sends you to a certain location, it won't always be easy. I want to encourage somebody this morning. Do you remember Moses? Moses, you know, he fled from Egypt because he killed the Egyptian soldier. And we know the story where he spent 40 years in Midian serving his, I believe, his father-in-law, Jethro. And I believe he had, um, you know, his wife, his children. So he, he started a family over there in Midian. And I remember the story so clearly where God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. God said to Moses, I needed to go to Pharaoh and to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So it was God who told Moses to go to Pharaoh. And we know the story where God allowed Pharaoh to harden his heart. We know the 10 plagues were released upon Egypt. And we know that the Israelites, you know, Pharaoh decided that, you know what, I'm not going to hold you guys any longer. I'm going to let you go as your Lord commanded me to do so. So we know the story where Pharaoh let, he, he released the children of Israel. They were on their way, thinking everything is okay. Have you ever been in a situation like that? You're on your way, you're on your journey. You're on that journey with God and you believe that everything is okay. And out of the blue, here comes this conflict. Out of the blue, here comes this test. Out of the blue, here comes this disrespect. People disrespect you. They throw, you know, somebody used a term the other day. They throw dirty water into your face. You didn't know that this would be the case. There are times when you find yourself in a situation where somebody said this and the other person said this and the other person said that and an another person said that. But there's no nothing. There's nothing in black and white. There's nothing written on paper. Whether it be black and white, blue and white, there was nothing written. And that is the reason why most times whenever they have meetings, they record these meetings. And they have what is called the minute for that meeting. Because there are times when persons may go into a meeting, and meetings are where per some companies or some um, business partners, they make certain decisions in a, certain, in a meeting. And normally, meetings must be documented. So nobody told you that because you did not document what was happening in that meeting, automatically, no persons are saying what they did not say. Persons are doing what they say they weren't going to do. 
So we have to be careful of, you know, how we conduct ourselves, not just as believers, but in general. If you're going into any agreement, if you're, if you're signing a rental agreement, whatever it is, don't just say to the... You have never seen, and, and this is another important thing, you know, for example, if I'm renting my property to somebody, I won't just say, okay, you know, I want you to go into my property. I want you to start living um, on this day, and I, and I want you to pay this amount of money per month. I have to put it in black and white because, trust me, I can get myself in very, you know, huge trouble. So we have to be careful of the agreements that we go into. Not because you're going into agreement with a pastor or a person in a prominent position. Everybody has that slight thing about them, that, that thing is like they're prone to errors. Even when you get married to a person, it's legally binding. It's not a case where you're married to a person today and you decide that because little problems come in your marriage tomorrow, you're going to say, okay, I'm no longer married to you. No, it's a legally binding agreement. As a matter of fact, it's a blood binding agreement. You know, some of you may understand it's more than just legally, but it's blood, it's spiritual, it's everything. So being married to a person is not a case where because you have problems today, it means that you're going to get up tomorrow and walk out of your marriage. Now, I want us to close on this point. I won't be long. You know, thank God, you know, I'm trying to, you know, concise these devotionals. And of course, we have to do so going forward because the time will be changed from six to ten, from six, from eight to to from 10 to 8 o'clock so it's no longer from 6 to 10 it's now from 6 to 8 and we're going to play that promo for those who are not aware of the change that's coming but what I want to say to us this morning is that and I want us to meditate on these words nobody told me and I heard the song you know I was reminded of the song nobody told me that this road would be easy so we know there are persons in the Bible who we consider these persons to be with God, but yet still they had some challenges. Moses was backed up at the Red Sea, and he was fearful. Pharaoh and the army were coming behind the children of Israel and Moses. He didn't know where to turn, and he cried out to his God, and God showed up for Moses. Even the three Hebrew boys, they were, they were told that they, they can't, you know, worship, they have to bow to the golden image. They can't worship the true and living God. But they said to the king, you know, we're not going to disrespect, disrespect you, king. Oh, king, live forever, but we're not going to bow to your golden image. We're going to praise our God until the, the very last minute. And even if God doesn't show up, then that's fine. Our, our main prior, pr um, priority is to serve and to worship the true and living God. So we know the story. They were thrown in the fire. So it doesn't mean that because you're walking with God, you won't be thrown in the fire. It doesn't mean that because you're walking with God, you won't carry a cross. You won't feel the burden. You won't be tested. You won't be tried. Don't, tell any, don't let anybody tell you that. You know, yeah. So we're going to pray in, in just a little while. I remember it was Elijah. I really wanted to talk about this. I remember it was Elijah who got one of the most amazing victories as a man of God. You know, the you know it was Jezebel and Ahab. They were there calling on, you know, the God of Baal, the, you know, the prophets of Baal. They were there calling on their their common G God, G O D. They were there calling on Baal. No Baal. Even Elijah was making a mockery of these prophets. And Elijah only called upon his God once. And we know he called upon the true and living God. We know that God showed up and he showed off. He licked up the sacrifice and, you know, the prophets of Baal, they were killed. But there was a Jezebel who said some words to Elijah. I'm going to find you. She sent one of her servants, our messengers, because they didn't have cell phones at the time. So 
Yeah. She sent one of her messengers and said, hey, hey, Elijah, I'm going to kill you, you know, because you killed my prophet. So I'm going to send, you know, I'm going to deal with you. So, of course, we know he fled. The man found himself in depression. You know, there are some persons who are being used mightily by God, but yet still they are struggling with depression. They're struggling with mental health issues. And these are some serious topics. There are times when persons who are in the pulpit, they're struggling with anxiety issues. The Bible says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let us shift our focus in this season. Let us trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. Nobody told you. Nobody told me. And I want to encourage you this morning. It won't be easy. But remember in everything, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. Because guess what? Your God is with you. And he promised in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you're God this morning. We thank you, God, for ministering another word to us. We thank you, God, for showing up for the listeners of HGG Radio. God, you're encouraging us in this season to keep focus, to do no wrong, to do no evil. God, you said in your word that if we harbor wickedness or iniquity in our hearts, then you will not hear us. Father, forgive us of our sins this morning, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us, but restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Thank you this morning that your people are refreshed your people are renewed. We thank you, God, that even our mindset is renewed. God, you said in your word that we should not be conformed to the things of this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Help us to renew our minds this morning to keep focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. Nobody told me. There's a lot of things people don't tell you. A lot of these persons that we look up to, for example, persons in leadership positions, we see them operating a certain way in public. But can you imagine if you can see some of the things which are happening behind the scenes, you would be shocked to see what, what's happening behind the scenes concerning some of these persons or... I want to. Say, I don't want to exclude myself. You know, that's the thing about me. You know, you know, there are times when we watch a lot of videos on YouTube, and you see persons coming on, and they're bashing this gospel artist, and they're bashing this person who is maybe an actor or this pastor who is a tele tele evangelist. So we're bashing these people. So we have to be careful of, you know, judging people because we have to first examine ourselves. That's what I'm basically saying. Don't be quick to say, hey, that person is not doing well and that person is not doing good. But I want you to first examine yourself to see where you are before. You know, there's a saying that you have to take the beam out of your eyes before. You know that, you know that saying. So let us be careful in this season. It is just about 6.38. It is now time for us to get into the Word of God. I really wanted to remind you as well that, of course, the changes are coming here at HGG Radio. There's new programs coming on. We'll be having new hosts, our host. So you can stay tuned for that. You know, a lot of rearranging will be happening as well. So really want us to stay tuned and listen to HGG Radio and you'll be informed of whatever changes will be happening right here and now. But in the meantime, 
We're going to take another break. We'll be right back. And right after this break, we're going to make way for our Bible reading. And we're in the book of Jeremiah. Stay tuned, my friends. HGG Radio. A revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio, join me, your host, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show, Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. A Disability Empowerment Foundation in partnership with Great Commission Foundation presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Admission free. That's the Disability Awareness Musical Concert, April 6, 2024. See you there. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca. That's ads at hggradio.ca. Or call us today at 825-343-4486. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. It is now time for our Bible reading this morning, courtesy of our friends over there at Faith Comes by Hearing. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Jeremiah chapter 4 and Jeremiah chapter 5. I want you to stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Do remember coming up at the top of the hour, it's going to be time for MPIAW Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, Action, and Worship. Let's listen to Jeremiah chapter 4 and Jeremiah chapter 5. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned, my friends. Jeremiah chapter 4. The Lord said... Israel, if you really want to come back to me, get rid of those disgusting idols. Make promises only in my name and do what you promise. Then all nations will praise me and I will bless them. People of Jerusalem and Judah, don't be so stubborn. Your hearts have become hard like unplowed ground where thorn bushes grow. With all your hearts, keep the agreement I made with you. But if you are stubborn and keep on sinning, my anger will burn like a fire that cannot be put out. Sound the trumpets, my people. Warn the people of Judah, run for your lives. Head for Jerusalem or another walled town. Jeremiah, I'll tell them I'm sending disaster from the north. An army will come out like a lion from its den. It will destroy nations and leave your towns empty and in ruins. Then I said to the people of Israel, Put on sackcloth, mourn and cry out, The Lord is still angry with us. The Lord said, When all this happens, the king and his officials, the prophets and the priests will be shocked and terrified. I said, You are the Lord God. So why have you fooled everyone, especially the people of Jerusalem? Why did you promise peace when a knife is at our throats? When disaster comes... The Lord will tell you, people of Jerusalem. I am sending a windstorm from the desert, not a welcome breeze. 
and it will sweep you away as punishment for your sins. Look, the enemy army swoops down like an eagle. Their cavalry and chariots race faster than storm clouds blown by the wind. Then you will answer, we are doomed. But Jerusalem, there is still time for you to be saved. Wash the evil from your hearts and stop making sinful plans before a message of disaster arise from the hills of Ephraim and the town of Dan. The Lord said, Tell the nations that my people have rebelled against me, and so an army will come from far away to surround Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. I, the Lord, have spoken. People of Judah, your hearts will be in pain, but it's your own fault that you will be punished. I can't stand the pain. My heart pounds as I twist and turn in agony. I hear the signal trumpet and the battle cry of the enemy, and I cannot be silent. I see the enemy defeating us time after time, leaving everything in ruins. Even my own home is destroyed in a moment. How long will I see enemy flags and hear their trumpets? I heard the Lord say, My people ignore me. They are foolish children who do not understand that they will be punished. All they know is how to sin. After this, I looked around. The earth was barren with no form of life. The sun, moon, and stars had disappeared. The mountains were shaking. No people could be seen, and all the birds had flown away. Farmland had become a desert, and towns were in ruins. The Lord... Are you ready to amplify your message? Fierce anger had done all of this. The Lord said, I have made my decision, and I won't change my mind. This land will be destroyed, although not completely. The sky will turn dark, and the earth will mourn. Enemy cavalry and archers shout their battle cry. People run for their lives and try to find safety among trees and rocks. Every town is empty. Jerusalem, your land has been wiped out, but you act like a prostitute and try to win back your lovers who now hate you. You can put on a red dress, gold jewelry and eyeshadow, but it's no use. Your lovers are out to kill you. I heard groaning and crying. Was it a woman giving birth to her first child? No, it was Jerusalem. She was gasping for breath and begging for help. I'm dying, she said. Jeremiah they have chapter 5. Me. Search Jerusalem for honest people who try to be faithful. If you can find even one, I'll forgive the whole city. Everyone breaks promises made in my name. I answered, I know that you look for truth. You punished your people for their lies, but in spite of the pain, they became more stubborn and refused to turn back to you. Then I thought to myself, these common people act like fools, and they have never learned what the Lord their God demands of them. I'll go and talk to the leaders. They know what God demands. But even they had decided not to obey the Lord. The people have rebelled and rejected the Lord too many times, so enemies will attack like lions from the forest or wolves from the desert. Those enemies will watch the towns of Judah, and like leopards, they will tear to pieces whoever goes outside. People of Judah, how can I forgive you? I gave you everything, but you abandoned me and worshipped idols. You men, go to prostitutes and are unfaithful to your wives. You're no better than animals, and you always want sex with someone else's wife. Why shouldn't I punish the people of Judah? I will tell their enemies, go through my vineyard. Don't destroy the vines, but cut off the branches, because they are the people who don't belong to me. In every way, Judah and Israel have been unfaithful to me. Their prophets lie and say, The Lord won't punish us. We will have peace and plenty of food. They tell these lies in my name. So now they will be killed in war or starved to death. I am the Lord God all-powerful. 
Jeremiah, I will tell you exactly what to say. Your words will be a fire. Israel and Judah will be the fuel. People of Israel, I have made my decision. An army from a distant country will attack you. I've chosen an ancient nation, and you won't understand their language. All of them are warriors, and their arrows bring death. This nation will eat your crops and livestock. They will leave no fruit on your vines or trees, and although you feel safe behind thick walls, your towns will be destroyed and your children killed. The Lord said, Jeremiah, the enemy army won't kill everyone in Judah, and the people who survive will ask, why did the Lord our God do such terrible things to us? Then tell them, I am the Lord, but you abandoned me and worshipped other gods in your own land. Now you will be slaves in a foreign country. Tell these things to each other, you people of Judah, you descendants of Jacob. You fools! Why don't you listen when I speak? Why can't you understand that you should worship me with fear and trembling? I'm the one who made the shore to hold back the ocean. Waves may crash on the beach, but they can come no farther. You stubborn people have rebelled and turned your backs on me. You refuse to say, let's worship the Lord. He's the one who sends rain in spring and autumn and gives us a good harvest. That's why I cannot bless you. A hunter traps birds and puts them in a cage, but some of you trap humans and make them your slaves. You are evil and you lie and cheat to make yourselves rich. You are powerful and prosperous, but you refuse to help the poor get the justice they deserve. You need to be punished, and so I will take revenge. Look at the terrible things going on in this country. I am shocked. Prophets give their messages in the name of a false god. My priests don't want to serve me, and you, my own people, like it this way. But on the day of disaster, where will you turn for help? This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. You just heard the reading there of Jeremiah chapter 4 and Jeremiah chapter 5. Really hope you were blessed by the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. Remember coming up in just about nine minutes time, it's going to be time for MPIAW motivation prayer instruction action and worship joining me at that time will be elder edmund muir stay tuned my friends hgg radio morning show is sponsored by all style construction for all your general construction needs commercial and residential cabinet making visit their website allstyleconstruction.ca or give them a call at 780-484-8885 you're awesome we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this atmosphere tonight. We were created to worship you and adore you. We just want to give you thanks, Lord. We just want to give you praise. You are El Shaddai, Elohim, Adonai, the God of the clouds, the God of the nature. Pass me not. Say, say, Lord, hear my own. The cry, why, oh, no, there's now.
Your presence, Lord.
Your presence is heaven to me. Just about three minutes after seven o'clock, we're going to put a pause on this one. Take it again right after MPIAW. The Hope of Glory Morning Show is sponsored by All Style Construction for all your general construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making. Visit their website allstyleconstruction.ca or give them a call at 780-484-8885. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. It is now time for MPIAW. Hallelujah. Motivation, prayer, instruction, action, and worship. Hallelujah. Joining me at this time, he's no stranger to HGG Radio. He's the host of Higher in Prayer. He's also the assistant pastor for Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministry. You know him very well. His name is Elder Edmund Muir, a man with a lot of women in his life. And he's going to explain that in just a little while. He has three daughters, a beautiful wife. He's going to tell you more about the other women in his life. Good morning to you, Elder Muir. How are you doing this morning, sir? Good morning to you, uh, Minister Douglas. I am doing well, giving God thanks. And yes, indeed, a lot of women in my life. That has been the story of my life. Glory be to God. Three Amen. daughters and a, and a wife, my mother, my grandmother, my sisters. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm giving God thanks this morning because he's a good God. How about you this morning? How are you doing this morning? I am doing well, giving God thanks for his many blessings. And I know that God will be leading us this morning throughout the day. So I really want you to, to I really want not to go more into your time because time is going away from us quickly. So I'm going to go ahead at this time, just turn things over to you and allow you to flow as the Lord leads you this morning's motivational word. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Minister Douglas. Good morning to all those who are online with us this morning. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Father, I exalt you and I magnify your wonderful name. Jesus, take full control of everything that's happening here this morning. Hallelujah. That your name will be glorified above all. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Whatever it is this morning, through it all, trust in your Lord. Through it all, hallelujah. Walk in confidence, hallelujah. Celebrate God no matter what the situation is. Through it all, people of God, just learn to trust in him in the mighty name of jesus this morning the thought that came to my mind was about the triumphant entry of jesus christ praise the name of jesus i just want to read a, a, a few verses for you from the book of luke chapter chapter 19 Verse 28 says, and when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass as he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entry ye shall find a coat tied whereon yet never man sat loose him and bring hither and if any man ask you why do ye loose him thus shall ye say unto him because the lord hath need of him glory to god let me read a little further now let me go to verse 35 and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice. Hallelujah. Began to 
rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Hallelujah. At this time of the year, we often spoke about or bring to remembrance Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, which of course is an extremely good thing. Praise the name of Jesus. But as we look into the story this morning, there are, there are a few things that I want to pull from the story, and one is the entrance of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. When Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, Jesus knew fully well that he was coming to be crucified. He was going to be crucified. He knew fairly well that the responsibility was placed upon him. You know, there were persons that warned him not to go back to, to Jerusalem. Because during this time of year, you know, all the Israelites will gather for worship. And so it was known that there would be persons who would be looking for Jesus in order to crucify him in order to lock him up, in order to stop him from doing that which he was doing. And all Jesus was doing was going and preaching the kingdom of God. Of course, the kingdom of God bringeth forth repentance and the kingdom of God, hallelujah, allows the power of God to be manifested on earth. No wonder he taught his disciples that thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done in heaven and earth. The will of the master was the utmost uh, priority in the mind of Christ Jesus. So even though Jesus knew everything that would have happened, he decided that he was going anyways. He knew that the task ahead would not be easy. But Jesus had an end game. Whilst Jesus was heading into Jerusalem and he was going, he had an end game. He knew your name, your name, your name. You, you were on his mind. And, and, and Jesus decided to push on, to pursue, hallelujah. Decided to continue in the midst of it all. But uniquely, we had Jesus sending for a donkey. Hallelujah, a colt. He sent for this colt that no man had ridden on. In, in other words, you know, they have horses and donkeys that in the past, in the past, they would have to break them, train them before anyone could go on them. Because for those who knows about animals, it would have been chaotic. That donkey or horse would have railed and no one could ride it if it wasn't broken in our train. But Jesus sent his disciples. Sometimes Jesus will send you some places to do some things and you don't understand what Jesus would have you to do. I am saying to you this morning, just be obedient to the voice of God. As he sent them for that call, to the disciples went and they brought back the donkey to Jesus. Hallelujah. When Jesus came, glory to God. Hallelujah. They placed clothes upon this donkey. The reason why Jesus uh, chose this donkey was a fulfillment of scriptures. It was a fulfillment of prophecy. 
Sometimes Jesus will allow some things in your life to fulfill your God-given destiny. The master and king, he came back to Jerusalem, a place where initially, if you read, you would have heard, hallelujah, the, the writers saying that they did not believe in him. They had little faith in him, but he was coming back. Hallelujah. Uh, this time he wasn't coming back on a horse. Hallelujah. Or he wasn't coming back in chariots because in those days, chariots were the most used uh, things to come back. I mean, to ride uh, the horses and, and they came in chariots. But Jesus chose a colt, a donkey, one that uh, many people, hallelujah, would not even have chosen. But he chose the donkey to symbolize peace oh hallelujah glory to god he was coming hallelujah with peace oh glory be to god hallelujah he wasn't entering as the god of war the bible let us know that as he entered they spread oh glory be to god palm leaves and all different types of things hallelujah on the ground has he come up and they were shouting somewhere shouting hosanna hallelujah somewhere calling him lord glory be to god he was being celebrated i want to tell you such it is that jesus knew the intent of them hallelujah and he was coming in people of god hallelujah you're going through some situations there are persons they will celebrate you glory to god they know that you're not hallelujah in their lives to create chaos you're there for war they will celebrate you they will say hallelujah good things about you hallelujah glory to god but i want to tell you something this morning hallelujah as i look at the scripture the same lord and god that they were celebrating he entered triumphantly there was great excitement and joy the attention was upon him Glory be to God. The eyes of the people, they were upon him. The haters, the eyes was upon him. Even those who proclaimed to love him, their eyes were upon him. They shouted good things from their lips. Oh, glory be to God. But when we fast forward, what was happening, I understand that Within that group of individuals that were celebrating him, when we read Luke, the Bible said his disciples, they were celebrating him. Hallelujah. But, but from other accounts, we realize that there was a large number of people shouting and celebrating the king coming into Jerusalem. Glory be to God. Within that number, people of God, there were individuals, hallelujah, that stood in the crowd. Hallelujah when Jesus was given to the people when they were to choose. At that time of the year, it was a custom of the king to release a, a man from prison. And so when they, when they came for Jesus and they captured him and they were about, hallelujah, to crucify, the choice was given between uh, Jesus and some other prisoners. But the people, the masses and the crowd, hallelujah, their shout was no longer Hosanna. Their shout was no longer Lord. The excitement was no longer there to, to see him entering. Hallelujah. At that time, hallelujah, the spirit has changed, had changed. The minds of the people, it changed. And the, the masses were shouting something else. They were shouting crucify him oh glory be to god they substituted him for a common criminal oh glory to god i am saying to you this morning people of god there will be times in your lives that the very things that they celebrated about you oh glory be to god they're gonna pull down hallelujah the very people around you that glorified you the people that were beside you because of something they thought 
what they could have had. They're going to turn against you like a green lizard. Oh, glory be to God. They're going to turn against you like a storm entering the city. They're going to turn against you like a beer robbed of its whelps. They're going to turn against you like a hungry lion. They will rip you to shreds with their mouth. But I am saying to you, hallelujah, if you're walking according to the principles of God, hallelujah, then your end will be better because Jesus, as he came, hallelujah, glory to God. And as they said, crucified him, the Bible allowed us to know that, yes, Jesus was crucified, but it was a crucifixion of a Jesus that brought victory to mankind. It was a crucifixion of a Jesus that allowed mankind to have access. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. They will turn on you. But as they turn on you, as the Bible would have said, hallelujah, that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called unto his purpose. Can I tell you yesterday as we were in church, a man of God, Minister Kirk, he read, he read, hallelujah, when, when Balaam wanted to curse the children of Israel. But I am saying to you, hallelujah, Hallelujah. They wanted to destroy Jesus. They wanted to proclaim, hallelujah, that destructive force of death upon him. But as they proclaimed death, Jesus took the sting of her death. Hallelujah. The power of her death. I am saying to you, as they have turned against you, it's going to work out for your good this morning, somebody. It's not only going to work out for your good, but it's going to work out for the good of all those who you love uh, because the Bible said for Christ so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son hallelujah it means therefore when he gave redemption was brought to mankind when you give hallelujah redemption would be brought uh, even when you're in that uh, situation of hostility that situation that you know they're not for you hallelujah but you can hear their mouth celebrating you uh, hallelujah you know that God will bring you out anyhow. You know that they will speak good of you eventually. All you have to do, hallelujah, is to sup that bitter cup. Hallelujah, don't let it pass. You're going through your season and your time now. Hallelujah, just remember, hallelujah, that your purpose, hallelujah, must be fulfilled. Just remember who you are this morning. Hallelujah, glory to God. I am saying to you this morning uh, that weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy is coming your way. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The waves have been covering you and you feel like you're drowning, but joy is coming your way because as Jesus was crucified, hallelujah, he wasn't crucified, hallelujah, by nothing but man. So man will crucify you, but when they crucify for you is just your purpose being pulled out. It's like the sap being pulled out of the wine of that grape. Oh, glory be to God. It's like the impurities being pulled out of the gold. Hallelujah. God is pulling it out, the, the, the dross out of you, the impurities out of you, endure hardness like a good soldier, because your end is a better, hallelujah, it's a better somebody, I'm telling you, it's a better, as Jesus, hallelujah, gave up his life, oh glory be to God, he brought freedom to mankind, hallelujah, he opened up the windows of heaven, he even went to hell and he preached. He released souls. I am saying this morning that God is only releasing your blessing in your life. Whatever it is you're going through, hallelujah. You thought they were your friends, but now you know. They call you family, but hallelujah, now you know that they're really not for you. Hallelujah. But when you think about it, God is saying this morning there is more for you than those that are against you. Because when you have God 
God, hallelujah for you. Glory be to God. You have thousands of angels on your side. You have the backing of heaven behind you. So when you walk, you're going to walk in power. This morning, I'm saying that you are a power pack individual. You're walking in the dudumous might this morning. The power of the living God is within you. And it's taking through your ch- you through your challenges this morning. Don't care what is happening around you this morning. The only care I want you to have is the care of Jesus. Uh, care about the things of heaven. Oh, glory be to God, knowing that God is going to take you through. Uh, believe the word of God. Uh, they, they, they celebrated him, but they said, crucify him. But as they spoke it, it was to bring life. Uh, hallelujah. Eternal life. Uh, I am saying to you, as you go through what you're going through, hallelujah, the temporary moment, uh, it's going to bring uh, an eternal fulfillment. Uh, an eternal joy is coming your way this morning. So as you walk on the streets, lift your heads on high, raise your hands to heaven and say, thank you, Lord, because greater works than these, the Bible says that we will do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go out this morning, I want you to smile even in the midst of the storm. Confuse the enemy with your smile. Confuse the enemy with your praise. Consume the enemy me this morning knowing that God has made a way for you in the midst of it all. Yes, he has made a way. Hallelujah. All the time that you've been hurting. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God is carrying you. God has purpose this time for you. This purpose to break some things from you. This purpose to shake everything around you. This purpose, hallelujah, that even the elements in the atmosphere will change for you. Because favor, hallelujah, was brought by Jesus as he descended, as he ascended. The Bible said, hallelujah, that he ascended in a glorious form. So it is, hallelujah, that your time, hallelujah, as it comes forth, comes forth forth in glory. Oh, hallelujah. And persons will look on the the wayside and they'll be amazed. Somebody's about to be amazed this morning. Somebody's about to be astonished this morning. Somebody's about, hallelujah, to be shocked this morning about what God is about to do, about what God is doing in your life this morning. All you have to do is believe. Continue riding, continue moving. Hallelujah. Walk in peace as Jesus Jesus came on the colt. I want you as you go through your workplace, as you go wherever you're going, just go in peace. Take peace with you. Oh, glory be to God. Don't go and let the enemy believe that you're fighting fire with fire, but go, hallelujah, like Jesus entered on that colt with peace. Oh, glory be to God in a glorious manner. He was poised. Hallelujah. The donkey wasn't running in, but the donkey was majestic going with the master on its back. Can I tell you this morning, let us walk majestically, knowing that God is not on our back, but he's all over me and he's keeping me alive. Let them know that Jesus is keeping you alive. Walk majestically because you're of a royal peace, priesthood. Yeah, hallelujah. You're a peculiar people. The Christ in me, the hope of glory, is taking me through my situation. I'm going to be majestic. I'm going to watch how I talk this morning. Oh, glory be to God, because I know Christ gave it up for me, even when he was going through. And even when I'm going through, I know I'm going in peace. I'm walking in peace. I'm talking in peace that God will have its way. Go thy way, people of God, and let the God in you be glorified. Hallelujah. Let not the nations, hallelujah, speak manner of evil about you and it is true. But as Jesus went in, when they cried crucify him, there was nothing for them to, to crucify him for. Oh glory be to God. There are times when persons will want to crucify you even when there is nothing to crucify you for. But walk in peace. Go in glory. Find hallelujah that peace of God that will take
take you through your storm, that will take you through your situation, even when your body is rocking in pain, go in peace, knowing that God fashioned your body, God made your body, and he has the power any second to send healing virtue to your situation. Go in peace this morning and exalt God, because where the praises go up, people of God, your blessings must come down. God bless you. And your miracle has already been approved. Just I really want to thank you for that powerful word, Elder Edlon Muir. I want you to go ahead at this time and I want you to pray for the listeners of HTG Radio. Mm. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name this morning. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just lift your hands and just bless Jesus. Bless Jesus this morning, wherever you are, wherever you are, just go ahead and bless him. Father, as your people blesses you, O oh God Almighty, I exalt your wonderful name another time. Sometimes, oh God, as we get up, we fail to exalt you. We fail to ask you for forgiveness. Oh God, but let nothing prevent the prayer of your people. Father, they are on this morning. I pray that the person with the spirit of heaviness this morning, I rebuke the spirit of heaviness over their lives. And I pray that they, hallelujah, will, oh God, will experience the joy. Let your anointing anoint them with the oil of a joy and happiness this morning. Oh God Almighty, let their spirits rejoice within, knowing that they're covered, they're sealed by the King, they're sealed by Hosanna in the highest of this morning. Take every situation, oh God. You know the hearts and the minds of your people. You know at times it seems like there are some places they cannot seem to get out of. Some situations that seems as if, oh God Almighty, hallelujah, they're going nowhere. I pray this morning sometimes, oh God, we feel as if we're pushing, we're pushing, but we're not seeing the rewards and the benefits. Whoever is online this morning that's been pushing and not feeling the reward and the benefit, I pray, oh God, that you you will touch their minds, that you will comfort them and give unto them, oh God, that which you will have them to have this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue, Lord, to remember our pastor. Remember HGG. Remember High Ground Tabernacles. Remember, oh God Almighty, our families, our friends, all those who are called by your name. Remember Edmonton and the move that is happening, oh God Almighty. Help your people to be available. Help your people to position. Forgive us of everything. Wash us, purge us, and release us to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. And amen. Thank you so much for praying for the listeners of HTG Radio. Thank you so much again, Elder Muir, for availing yourself for yet another episode of MPIAW Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, Action, and Worship. Before you go, I want you to go ahead and leave some instructions, some final words to the listeners, and also remind them to join you later on inside Higher in Prayer at 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This this time that we're going through, many persons are suffering. Sometimes the concerns of our hearts cause us to, to give up. I want to tell you this morning, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able to part the Red Sea in your life. He is able. He is able to touch you. He is able to heal your circumstances, your situation. All we have to do is to follow the instructions of the prophet Isaiah. Hallelujah. Where God proclaimed, if my people who are called by my name, hallelujah, will humble themselves. Oh God, let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Let us repent. Let us turn from the little things. It's a small, it's a small fox that gnaws the vine. Those little things, hallelujah, that want to sever us from the vine. Because Jesus said, I am the true vine. Hallelujah. So let us prune, let us purge this morning. And let us just be humble and endure as good souls. God bless you all this morning. I want to remind you also, as I, as requested, about uh, Higher in Prayer, which comes on 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. 
Hallelujah. Tonight we will have Elder Clayton. Hallelujah. He'll be coming on to pray with us. And I encourage you, come and pray with us. You can hear the testimonies for yourself. Every week we have testimonies coming in about the deliverance that God. We, we have seen, we have seen uh, papers. We have seen a sickness disappear. We have seen so many things, people of God. And I believe that God can do it for you too. What he's done for others, he will do for you. Join us tonight, 7.30 Mountain Standard time for higher in prior on hgg radio the number to send your request is 825-343-4486 that's 825-343-4486 the only requirement we have come believe in and share the link that someone else's life might be touched god bless you and i'll see you god's willing on higher in prior tonight have a great day. Bye, everyone. Right now, they're hurting. Thank you so much again, Elder Edmund Muir, for coming on this morning and sharing with us inside MPIAW. But I Motivation, prayer, instruction, action, and worship. God bless you richly. I pray the hand of the Lord rests mightily upon you, that the Spirit of the living God will continue to move mightily in and through you. God bless you and God bless your family. In Jesus' name, bless you, sir financial setback that was elder edmund muir um, assistant pastor right here at higher ground tabernacle ministry god is up to something great in this season pillar, you're tuned to higher ground gospel radio of course you're looking forward to connecting with our listeners on hggradio.ca you can come over this morning let's have a great time in the presence of the lord remember my friends in the presence of the lord there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Stay tuned, my friends. There's a blessing with your name written on it. Mighty long enough. Disability Empowerment Foundation, in partnership with Great Commission Foundation, presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. PM. Admission free. That's the Disability Awareness Musical Concert, April 6, 2024. See you there. HGG Radio. You're awesome. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this atmosphere tonight. We were created to worship you and adore you. We just want to give you thanks, Lord. We just want to give you praise. You are El Shaddai, Elohim, Adonai, the God of the clouds, the God of the church.